Exodus 38:39. Here we go. We're, we're, we're almost at the end. Um, well done for hanging in there. This is our 20th video in Exodus, and we have one more looking at chapter 40 next week. And then we'll take a break over Christmas and January and jump into Leviticus in February. Um, but let's go. Let's have a look. It's been a week for you, so let me remind you of where we're up to so far. Israel are at Mount Sinai, where God has entered into a covenant relationship with them. It's like a marriage contract, remember? Um, but Israel hasn't even made it to the end of the honeymoon before they have been unfaithful. It took them less than 40 days to forget about their promise to obey, and they forget about Yahweh, and they start to worship a false god that they have made for themselves, a calf, a golden calf. Anyway, Moses hears about this and he gets all grumpy parent with Israel. Um, he goes down there, he, he breaks the stone tablet, he makes them eat it, uh, and then he says, I'm going to go and plead on your behalf. And so he goes back up the mountain and he pleads with God for Israel. Moses intercedes for them. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And it works uh, because as a result of Moses' plea, pleading, God decides to re-establish this covenant with Israel. Um, what are you doing, God? But incredible, incredible forgiveness and mercy and forgiving the sins and rebellion of these people. But the tabernacle is yet to be built. Uh, this is a really vital part of the relationship between Yahweh and these people because one, God needs to play, uh, he needs a place to dwell with these people. And two, he needs a system that will allow a holy God to be among a sinful people. And so the tabernacle will be this place to dwell and the system will be the sacrificial system that we'll hear about when we read Leviticus come February. Um, so the building of the tabernacle is what we have here in these chapters. Uh, the tabernacle construction and then its completion um, and Moses comes and inspects it to see if it's up to scratch. That's what we've read today. Now, as I mentioned last week, in these chapters, Israel carries out God's blueprints for the tabernacle with exact precision. While God values creativity and self-expression at other times, you know, think of the Psalms, it's not so here. What God wants here is to get it right. Do what I said. Everything has to be carried out exactly as God has instructed Israel because every aspect of the tabernacle has theological significance. All of the colors, all of the materials, all the furnishings, it's all important. And it's important that Israel gets it right. Uh, you know, you might have felt bored as you've read through it over the past weeks and months. Um, and I'll admit, I have at times too. But every detail matters to God. And that's why Israel had to carry it out with precision. Um, this isn't an near enough is good enough kind of project. Things needed to be right. And so you might think, well, what is the theological significance that this is all pointing to? And we've talked about this as we've read through the blueprints together. But this is a, it's a new Eden. This is where God will dwell with his people in a good space, uh, a, a holy space. Um, and doing things just right will mean that the people are safe, even though the most powerful being in the universe has come to dwell with them. The most holy and unique being in the universe, God, the creator, has said that he will dwell among them if, if they carry this out correctly. Uh, he, he, he wants it to be made a certain way and Israel needs to do that. And so that's what we have here. Israel finish the work. Uh, they finish the furnishings, the curtains, the posts, the courtyard, the priestly garments, the ephod, the breastplate, and all of that stuff. And, and when it's all done, Moses goes through it all with a fine tooth comb to inspect it and to make sure that they have got it just right. And then the chapter ends in this way. The Israelites had done all all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. 
So Moses blessed them. Now, remember that word blessing. It's a very important word in the Torah. Uh, when God created the world, he blessed it. And so this has, again, a creation echo. On the seventh day, the work was finished and God blessed it and made it holy. And so here, the work is finished and so God blesses it and makes it holy. Now remember, th this place is a small Eden space. This is exciting in the storyline of the Bible. God has now got a home among his people. Again, creator God who made the world now has somewhere to live with his people, despite their sin, just like in the garden. So I wonder, does that, does that get you excited? It should. This is incredible. Creator God dwelling in the tabernacle among the Israelites. But I don't think we do get excited because I think we, we, we can't help but skip ahead, can we? We know that this story doesn't play out as it should and we let that ruin it for us. Not, not, it doesn't play out as it should, not for, not for a thousand years at least. Um, but maybe, I think at this point in the story, it might be helpful to just forget where it's headed and wonder at where we are. God has made a way to be with his people. And now Moses has blessed it and God can move into the neighborhood. Because I think if we, if we pause here and get excited by that, it might help us to see the incredible nature of Jesus, who is God with us. Jesus, who was the one who tabernacled among us. Jesus is God moving into the neighborhood. And that is exciting. Enjoy.